and uh, I thought I was on a Wake Africa page, but looks like we had some slight technical hitch. All the same, I want to welcome each and every person who has now joined. If you are there on my page and you have followed here, you are watching me. God bless you so much for the patience and for the understanding. So today we want to learn from the book of Matthew chapter 8. And we are learning from verse number 5 up to verse 13. And that will be our focus verse. Our topic today is just a word, a word in season, a word that speaks into our lives and changes our lives totally. For we have this man who is a centurion uh, from Capernaum, a man of the Roman guard. He went to Jesus and he told Jesus, Lord, my servant is lying at home and the servant. Then Jesus said, willingly, he said, I will come to your house and I will heal him. But this man said to Jesus, no, Lord, I do not deserve that you come to my house. And he said, just speak a word and I sh the, the servant shall be made well. So when he said this, he continued to tell Jesus in verse number nine, how he is also a man of authority, a man under authority and also has people under him. And when he said that, um, he said, he tells this one go and he goes and the other one come and he comes to the other one do and he does. When Jesus heard what this man said, he said, this is great faith. He said, I've not found such great faith even in Israel. In verse number 11, Jesus says, and I say to you that many will come and from the east and from the west, and they will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, many who are called sons today, many who are, uh, let me just read it again, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into utter darkness. There will be weeping and there will be gnashing of teeth. And verse 13 says, And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done to you. And the servant of the centurion, the Bible tells us, was healed immediately. So the word that we are speaking today, the word that I am teaching today by the power of the Holy Spirit, is a word, we know that the word of God, has always been considered as the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, which is correct. Jesus is the word of God. He was in the beginning, he was there with God, and he is there, and the Bible tells us this same word, who is Jesus Christ, in verse number 14 of John chapter 1, the Bible says this man came, and this word came, became flesh, and dwelt among us. So as much as the, uh, the word of God could be Jesus, God could be the gospel itself, we want to look at the word today as a royal decree that is declared by God our Father in heaven to bring about change into our circumstances, into, uh, into our situations. Even so, I want to pray that all of you who have joined in will open up your hearts that you may be able to um, accept this word. Take it within your heart and make it fruitful for yourself because it has been released from the heavenly places. So this word that we are speaking about, as we are coming to learn, at the we're going to look at the levels of authority. How we operate at the levels of authority, even as men and women of God, as sons and daughters in the kingdom. The royal decree that is made, sometimes we can read from the Old Testament, the book of Esther, the book of Daniel, and we find that there is a royal decree that is always made. And when the king speaks a word, it remains so. When the men and the women of God spoke a word, it remained so. That was a royal decree. We are royal priesthoods. We can speak a royal decree into our environments and things will happen. But we have to understand the structure of authority that we have to deal with in the name of Jesus. As man, the Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and that is the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this word is not a wished word, a word that we wish within our spirits, but this is a word that we speak. We must speak. God speaks a word. The Bible says he spoke a word and the world came into creation. He spoke a word and everything that we can see was created by that very word. 
And therefore, as we speak the word of God, we are operating in the same authority for Jesus says, I have given you power, I have given you authority. He says, I'm going to the Father, the things that I have done, you will do greater things because the Holy Spirit is coming. And when the Spirit of God comes, he teaches us how to speak a word in season. This word that we speak is a word that goes out, a word that is a full package of Jesus the I am. When you speak that word, that word comes and brings the healing, a declaration. You know, sometimes this word comes and uh, we look at various ways that the word of God may come. The word of God may come unto us, but when it enters into our spirit, now we speak it and it becomes the word in season. We pray to God and he gives us a vision about a certain thing, about a certain situation, about a country, about a land. And therefore we come with the visions and we proclaim it prophetically to the environment around us. It becomes the word in season. A word in season is not a word in your heart. A word in season is the word that you speak out for the speaker. But for that one who receives is the word that you receive by your ears and you put it in your heart and you put it into action around you and things begin happening. They may come as pictures. They may come in speech like I am preaching now. They may come in a form of a song or they may come as form of letters. We have letters of Paul in the New Testament. They come. That is the word of God. Most of the things that are declared there, they are declared and they are established forever. It is the word of God. Now, looking back to the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to verse number 12, Jesus the Bible tells us Jesus is willing. Jesus says, I will come and heal him. Which means Jesus is always willing to heed the call that we make for him. When we call him, the Bible says, he answers. When we call him, he will answer and show us great and mighty things. Illustrations all through the scriptures. But Jesus is willing to go to a centurion's house to heal a servant whom he has not seen. Praise be to Jesus. That teaches us one thing, that even today, Jesus is willing to bring change into a situation. When we ask of him, he is willing. We cannot say, Jesus, are you willing to make me whole? Yes, he is willing to heal, willing to deliver, willing to bring change. He is totally willing, absolutely willing to bring change into the lives of his loved ones. Praise be to Jesus. So from verse number 5 and to verse number 8, we look at this conversation that takes place. Praise be to Jesus. And Jesus is willing to go to the centurion's house. Praise be to God. Now from verse, in verse number 9, we see a centurion guard, a man who is not born again, receive a revelation that most of us fail to receive. And the revelation that he receives is the structure of authority. He says, I am a man under authority, which means there is someone above me. Then he says, I also have people under me. So he is in between. He is not there as the mediator, but he is there as the person, as the vessel through which the authority or the decree of the king, the decree of Caesar will pass through him. So he says, I send this word. I hear it from my master. I hear it from the king. And the king says, do this. And I tell my servants, go and they go. Come and they come, do and it is done. The same way we are in the other place, God is our king. God is our maker. He is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. So he perceives that Jesus has been sent by God. And by the decree of Jesus, the word of of God will come to his house. And this is very important. He says, Jesus, you do not need to come to my house, for I am undeserving that you may come into my house. You are so high above. Just send your word. Send your word, and your word will do great and mighty things in my house. So this centurion perceives that God has already spoken the word. Then Jesus bears the word, speaks the word, and sends the word into the centurion's house. We need to get this revelation. 
Because we must understand that any time the word of God is spoken, any time the preacher speaks the word of God, he is not speaking of his own accord. He is speaking what he has heard from God. Jesus gives us this illustration throughout the New Testament in the Gospels. He says, I do nothing unless I have heard my father, I've seen my father do. I say nothing unless I have heard my father say. So when Father God says, then Jesus speaks and it happens. So he says to this one, go, your faith has made you whole. He says to the other one, go and wash yourself in the, in the pool of Siloam. He says to this one, arise and live. He says to this one, pick your bed and go. So Jesus speaks what Father God has already spoken. So when we speak the word of God, we hear from by revelation. We get by revelation what God has spoken unto us and we decree the word of the king. For Jesus tells us in the book of John 17 that the same way God, the same way Father God you have sent me, I am sending them also. God, uh, God has sent Jesus and Jesus is sending us the same, same way Father God sent him. So when we speak and decree a thing, we decree a thing simply because we have heard Father God say. We don't speak it because we've heard from our emotions or we've heard it from our reading or from our human knowledge of human wisdom, but we hear it from God and therefore we speak it and it becomes fruitful to the lives of the hearers and the listeners. So this is a great revelation and we see it happen all through scripture. There is a woman who went to Jesus and said, ah, though I am a little dog, then I, I do not deserve the whole bread. I desire just a word from you, the crumbs that are falling off the master's table. We look from verse number 10 and verse number 12. Praise be to Jesus. There is also a revelation of the royal decree in the, uh, uh, in the gospel that we present. There must be that uh, revelation to understand that this word has been given by Father God. Praise be to Jesus. As we speak, we know that the word that we are speaking, the songs that we hear, the songs that we listen to, and sometimes you wonder, was this given by God or is this just for entertainment? Therefore, anyone who is a minister of God must be able to listen from God, get the revelation from God. And that word that we speak is not the entire gospel, but this word is the sword of the spirit, the word that goes out and changes things. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 147. Psalm 147 and verse number 15. The Bible says, he sends, how, he sends out his command to the earth. Other versions say he sends out his word to the earth and his word runs swiftly to accomplish the purpose that God has sent it for. So God sends out his word. The word of God can be sent. Then in the book of, in the book of Psalm 107, the Bible says he sent his word and healed them. Hallelujah. God sends his word and heals our disease. The same way we can send the word of God so that the word of God can accomplish whatever it's been sent to do. Hallelujah. Remember this. God follows up his word to fulfill it at any time. Praise be to Jesus. He who believes, according to the book of uh, Matthew 8 and verse 13, Jesus says, as you have believed, therefore receive. The way you receive the way you believe, what you believe is what you will receive. It is according to faith. It is not according to wisdom. It is according to faith. If you believe it, it happens. If you believe it, it happens. And we will look at various candidates in the Bible that received this word that according to our human nature were not even supposed to receive, yet the word is powerful. The word has power. The word has authority to speak both to the living and to the dead, to create things from things which were not, so that they become things which we can see. There is power and authority in the speaking of the kingdom decree. Hallelujah. In our situation, like now the countries and the nation worldwide, people are facing a lot of problems, and we have people uh, doing various things and just speaking and doing things the way they used to do in the past. No, we're not supposed to do things the way we did yesterday. We're not supposed to eat 
the salmons of yesterday. We are not supposed to eat the bread of yesterday. There is a fresh revelatory word that Jesus is speaking to each and every situation, each and every specific country. And I thank God that people are listening from South Africa, you're listening from Lesotho, you're listening from the US, you're listening from Australia, and all over the world, you are a person, the royal priesthood that God has put in place in those places so that you may be able to utter a fresh royal decree, not out of your own wisdom, but what comes from God and is in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. We are sons and daughters in the kingdom, and therefore we've been granted the, the power and the authority to speak and to pray and to declare God's word. The Bible tells us, we hear Eliphaz telling Job in the book of Job, chapter 22 and verse number 27 you will make uh you will make your prayer to him and he will hear you and you will pray and you will pay your vows in verse 28 it says and you will also declare a thing you will also decree a thing and it shall it shall be established for you ours is to declare god's work is to establish it by his word by his power we are been given the power We've been given the authority, but everything that happens upon here is not according to our power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, even as we are told in the Bible. Hallelujah. And it will be established for us so that our ways, so that light may shine on our ways. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. For those of us who are joining, we are looking at a topic, just a word. You know, most of us have been looking for a lot of things. We've been looking for long things we've been looking for uh, in the wrong places we've been searching from things in the past maybe we've been searching for things that may not help us but what we need in our current situation in our current society we need just a word a word that will shift the atmosphere a word that will shift everything our environment our situations our circumstances they need to be shifted a word that will turn this COVID-19 around into something that is just a testimony yes it was a test for us for a long time but let it be a testimony in the name of Jesus just like Pastor George was teaching us about the other someone, he was saying, God took my mess and made it a message. Yes, COVID-19 has made everything a mess, but we are thanking him. The Spirit of God is here, and God is able to make a message out of it. And we will live to see the, uh, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, even as we declare his word with boldness, without fear. Hallelujah. When we declare the word of God, we must maintain the chain of authority. Remember, it is God's word received by the Spirit of God in revelation and spoken out of faithfulness in Christ Jesus and believing in his word. God follows that word that we speak in that way. When you speak it out of your own accord, when you write those many songs with your own wisdom, when you write them out, uh, when you've searched other books and you write things that want to please men, they may not bring any effect to the society. But when you bring it from God, I call it downloading the rhema word from God. When you sing that one song, it becomes a blessing into the community, into the family. Praise be to Jesus. There is one important thing that we must learn. Yes, we have the gospel. And the Bible says, let us always be prepared by the gospel, let us prepare ourselves by putting on the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel of shalom, the gospel that makes everything that is broken fixed, the gospel that makes everything missing come back, the gospel that makes everything that we are doing and everything around us become fruitful. This is the gospel that we need to have entirely. But when we are speaking, we are speaking the sword of the spirit. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15, get the gospel. Be prepared in season and out of season, fully in the gospel, soaked in the gospel, so that when a situation arises, you don't speak the gospel, you speak the word of the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the revelation word of God. Praise be to Jesus. We have been given that power and that authority. Jesus is talking in the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, prophetically, Isaiah writes about Jesus, and he says, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak 
a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me. I'm morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear like the learned. Praise be to Jesus. He awakens my ear. God needs to awaken our ears so that we may be able to see and to understand what God is saying. Hallelujah. Each and every morning when we wake up, are we able to hear from God? Are we able to listen to what God is saying about our countries, about our villages, about the places we are living? Are we able to hear? God needs to our, awaken our ears and put in a word in our ears and let it come to our spirit that we may be able to speak a word in season to those who are weary. Many people are weary out there. Others are sick. They've lost their jobs. They have no financial capabilities. They have lost loved ones. You have people who have divorced and have uh, separated from their marriages. These are weak people. They need a word of encouragement. It is not about the entire gospel, but the word in season. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. And this is what we say. One word in season is better than a thousand words out of season. You may speak a thousand words out of season, which will help no one. But one word in season will become beneficial and will help anyone that is listening to the very, very word. Hallelujah. Now, this word of God is not a respecter. Someone may be asking himself and is saying, am I a candidate to this word? Maybe you're asking yourself, do I deserve this word? The Roman centurion who came to Jesus said, I do not deserve that you come to my house, but send your word. Praise be to God. He received the word of God. This word is not a respecter of persons. Whether you are a Gentile or a Jew, whether you are white or you are black, this word is for you. A word in season will bring out change into your life. One time, some 14, 13, 15 years ago, I can't remember, I had a word of season that got me out of darkness into this marvelous light. So it doesn't matter whether you're short or tall. This word is for you. It's a word in season to those of us who are weary in the name of Jesus. It does not respect places. You may come from different continents, but this word will come and this word will help you. This word will bring you up. This word will lift you. This word will encourage you. This word will empower you. This word will set you free. Praise be to Jesus. It doesn't matter the position that you are in, the position in society, whether you're rich or poor. The word of God came to a poor fisherman called Peter, and Peter was fishing, and this word made him a fisher of men. The same, same word met a learned person called Saul in his way to Damascus and helped him. So this word is not about the social standing in society. It's about those who believe. For Jesus says in verse number 13, as you believe, go, you have received it. And the Bible says the servant became well that very hour. Praise be to Jesus. As we come into the conclusion, I want to say this. There are many words that have been spoken against you. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17, the second part, says that you shall refute every word that arises against you because God has given you that power to be able to arise and to refute, to uh, forcefully refuse the words that have been risen against you. God has given you that power over your family, over your children, over your working place, over each and everything that you're doing. God has given you because there is a higher decree. As a son of the kingdom, as a daughter of the kingdom, you are operating on a higher decree for yourself and for the society around you. You are operating on the king of kings, the decree of the king of kings. Praise be to Jesus. The devil must, might have spoken a lot of things around you, but know this, as we say, Jesus is the final say. Praise be to God. Even if the devil has tried to silence your destiny, but God has something into play. We look into the Bible, then we see a man who is Mordecai, the book of Esther. He is a slave in a foreign land, and there is a man who has planned evil against him, but God turns it around. What Mordecai was planned against, what Haman planned against Mordecai, turned around and I am praying today that God may turn around everything that your Haman is doing in your life turn it around so that you may receive the blessing of Mordecai may he turn around every evil that 
the enemy is trying to send your way into something good. Let everything that happens in your life, whether good or bad, let it happen for good, for God is with you. There is another man called Mephibosheth, hallelujah, Mephibosheth, in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, the word of man, the word of Siba said, oh, this man is late. This man doesn't need anything. But the King David said, I need him the way he is. Then he said, this man stays in Lodibar, a place that is dry and has nothing. But the king says, I need him. You may be in a dry place. God needs you. You may be lame or weak in any way. God needs you. He has something in play for you that you may be able to sit at the table that he has prepared for you. And just as Mephibosheth, may you be able to sit at the king's table all the days of your life and let everything that has been taken from you because of your weakness, because of your lack, everything that has been stolen from you may yet be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the brothers of uh, brothers of Joseph also they said Joseph uh, is 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 a man who is pr prideful a man with a coat of many colors beloved of the father and they call him a dreamer but God had a plan for Joseph praise be to God everything that the enemy has set against you or has risen against you God is going to use it for good for this is the word of God this is the word for the season. We have a man who was rotten in the grave for four days, and we all know him. His man, this man was Lazarus, but everyone said he's rotten. He's been set there for a long time. He's been uh, dead for four days. He cannot listen. He cannot hear, but glory be to Jesus. When Jesus came into play, he said, come out of the grave, and the dead man was able to hear and came out of the grave. Praise be to Jesus. So I am praying today that any of you who is listening and you feel dead in any way, maybe your womb is dead. It is the time for fruit to come out of it. Maybe you are there and you have been put in a place where you feel like you're not good enough in society. God is calling you out and is saying, come out of there for you are going to live. Death is not your portion, but life more abundantly in Christ Jesus. If we see dead people receiving this word, you are a candidate of it. Naturally, dead men don't listen, but there is a power of God that we are given even in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verse number 15 to verse number 21, that this power worked out in Jesus in his death. The resurrection power worked. This is the word in season. It works as the resurrection power of God to rise even those, those who are dead. There is no situation that God cannot change. There is no circumstance that God cannot turn around in the name of Jesus. So I pray today that may you receive this word. And may this word bring change into your life. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and I bless your name, O oh God, for this day. Many of the things that you have done in the past, many of the things that you're doing even now, and many of the things that you plan to do in the future for your plans for us are good. Each and every person who is listening, they're having a situation in their lives. They're having a condition in their life. There is an, a condition in the environment of Father that makes them look like those ones who are dead, those ones who cannot function. Father, I pray and I speak life into them in the mighty name of Jesus. May they be able to receive life and wholeness in the name of Jesus. Father, as they believe, may they receive. Father Lord, I may not be able to mention each and every person of God, but you're speaking a special word into each and every one's spirit today. Father, I pray that as they believe, may they receive, oh God. Let an instant miracle happen in their life. The miracles of provision and promotion, the miracles of prosperity in the name of Jesus, let them happen in the name of Jesus, the miracles of resurrection and healing, Father, in the name of Jesus, may they be able to receive in Jesus' name. I thank you for Awake Africa. I thank you for Bishop Catherine and Darren. Father, Lord, bless their lives so far, and each and every person that serves under them, and all of us who are serving, O oh Lord, in the platform of Awake Africa. Lord, may you empower us to bring change into the communities that we are living, O oh Father, to live out the gospel, O oh Father, to live the gospel that we are preaching, O oh Father. 
We thank you for each and every person, Father. Bless them richly. Let your face shine upon them. May you keep them, O oh Father. Make their ways straight, O oh Father. Every hindrance in their lives, O oh Father, Lord, may you remove. Cause them to be overcomers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Teacher Masai. I serve with Believers Fellowship Tabernacle Church, and I want to thank them for the support and all the other mentors who have helped me come this far and all your support for being here. Invite each and every person to watch this video. And we want to pray for a blessing.